Blessings everyone and good evening. I'm Brian Hewitt and again good evening I'm Brian Hewitt of Anytime a Man from our at 6 p.m. here at our location here in Los Angeles which is the Pacific region west coast of North America. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let As we go into our lesson here of Revelation 14, 6 through 13, Revelation 14 through 6 through 13. What a time, the Lord, we have all day here. My beautiful wife is teaching at 3 p.m. The, the importance of the treasure. What is your treasure? And just being blessed and receiving the, the Lord's Holy Spirit, His blessing, can make it a strength, stronger and stronger every day. We thank you for those 200 countries that are confirmed viewership as we continue growing and growing and growing from the gypsy nations of Pakistan to India to Africa to Europe to home itself Canada and our home here in Los Angeles California and of course Western New York we bring you the love of the Lord we bring you all the kindness and the goodness and the experiences and the treasures that God has given us and we share them right back at you so as the world becomes engulfed in its own little destruction remember this the 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 wicked shall destroy itself but we are above the wicked we have the love of god that god has brought us into his redemption his gifts his love so as we put our finger into revelation 14 tonight and get a, a clean empty sheet of note paper let's go before the throne of god and pray Dear Jesus, we thank you for this living word of God, which is always pregnant, revealing the manifestation of your glory. We thank you for your time, the endless realm of your love that brings us the news and the in-depth of your news, which is your love. The newness of your love, the embrace, the baptismal of the blood of Calvary. Have You have looked it down upon us into our hearts from the cross, given us that new heart, the purity of the new heart, remove the old stony edges of the old heart, and the depth of that new heart represents the empty tomb, the resurrection that you have provided for all of us. Bring down your love upon the nations that need it, from Syria to Egypt to Mali, to all that are blind to your name. May all the extremists, the, the terrorists, wake up and kneel before you, our Lord. For you are the God of all gods. There is no other God but you. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Brethren, we come into the unity of God's love and his truth. Let's get right into our lesson. <clears throat> Revelation 14, we did 1 through 5 last night. You can see that over YouTube and Ustream. And we're going to dive into 6 through 13 tonight. <clears throat> Let's go. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen and the, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Verse 9. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture unto the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from the labors, and their walks do follow them. And their works do follow them. Thank you, Jesus, for the reading of this word. That was Revelation 14, 6 through 13. Now, brethren, we come into this time, right, right here, right now, 
feeling the presence of God's love, the unity that it brings to all of us. Let's feel what we're teaching today, not just go with it and, and hear it, but let's live it, live it, live it. Listen to what the scripture of the first angel says to us about the proclamation of judgment. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he, that, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth. Listen to what, I want someone to tell me what I just said, please. To every nation, tribe, and language, and people, he said in a loud voice, for God and give him glory, because the hour of judgment has come. Worship who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. So, again, the first part of verse 6, And then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth. So, not much is going to be left for anyone to be preaching. So, verse 6 says what, brethren? <clears throat> the angels, in, not in our time as we are living, but in this time, we will see some preaching done by the angels. So, if we come into, let's see, if the curtain fell, it was customary for people to come up to the stage and, and pre preview the upcoming scene. The scenes are changing. The, the angels and messengers are here telling of the up upcoming scenes. What we see here, what we see is that there is a vast difference between the eternity the sinner can expect and what which awaits the saints of the Lord. Matthew 25, verse 46. The passage in its context is mainly for those who bear the mark of the beast. However, there is an application for our day for everyone seated here tonight. I want us to think on the thought tonight. What happens the point of your spiritual death. The rejection confirmed. Angels preaching, not in our day, but in the tribulation there will be no one else to do it. The angels will have to. The obedience of the angels, the everlasting gospel, Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, the hour of his judgment, how he has spoken to men and people have rejected. They will then, then also. These are the earth dwellers. We've got quite a few of them already. There is no response to the gospel from the dead. There are no second chances. Luke chapter 16, verse 31. They will, re no, they will not repent anyway. It's the churches. <clears throat> Hello? The churches of our days. And the fornication is concluded. Babylon is a type of the world. This is a picture of a harlot enticing victims. Babylon will fall. After, after death, the entire world will be taken away from the sinner. No more bottles, needles, brothels. Oh my God, how can we live with ourselves? People who live in the fourth world will have nothing after this life. The condemnation is continued. This is very frightening. Condemnation is continuing for the sinners. If you drink of the cup of, the ro cup of this world, you will drink the cup of God's wrath. And you are damned. Damned, damned, damned. The proclamation is universal. The proclamation is to earth dwellers of every nation, tribe, language, and people. I don't want to hear anyone during this time period say, Not me! <laughs> Guess what? You're bringing your own family straight to hell with you. The way you live, the way you talk, the way you breathe, everything. You do everything for yourself. And you've got your family believing that you are God, and you have all type of relationships with your own children. And God... You are damned. You are damned. You are damned. And with this, how does he proclaim it? In a loud voice, because it is urgent. Every unbeliever needs to hear what is being said. And every unbeliever needs to act at this immediately. Before it's too late, we want to end up like Jericho. Oh, 40 years. I got more time. No. 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 The, the little hooker called Rehab who took in the spies who turned their life over to the God for doing God's spiritual works. Guess what? Her house, house 
was the only building that's standing during Jericho with a little purple veil outside the window. Already, right now, the day of God's judgment has begun. I hope I don't just please read the newspaper or follow it from the BBC, Yahoo News, Google News, CBC. Go for it. Fear God and give Him glory. Fear God and give Him glory. Worship God, the creator of creation. What gives Him the right to make these kinds of demands? Well, God is God. Notice the reason He made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. There are the same places mentioned in the trumpet judgments. He made them. He is a creator. God is a judge, not the beast, not Satan. God has the right. So for saying, well, uh, well, in today's world, Brother Bryant, you know, we've got earthquakes, we've got starvation, we've got malnutrition, we've got craziness, you know, tidal waves. Why is that? If God is like this, why is this happening? Well, God is fulfilling his prophecy. Prophecy in today's world. Read it in, you know, the teachings of Christ, Isaiah, Ezekiel. It's We're not kidding here. We're not kidding. It, it, I've often said in the task that a lot of you know of the Odysseus Project, <clears throat> law enforcement ministry, journalism will have to work hand-in-hand -hand to inform the public correctly and to present this type of truth to God, for God, and for the people. Too many of us are living for ourselves and for our selves and just for ourselves we got a big world out there we got to what is often said get a life so let's so babylon has fallen fallen babylon the great why Be such vengeance on babylon well because she's made all the nations drinking the maddening wine of her adultery throughout the, the revelation the idea of adultery is used to speak of idolatry it speaks of the world's attempt to keep people away from the gospel babylon has made the nations drink the wine of her idolatries think of nebuchadnezzar's golden statue everyone has commanded to bow down before it there is a contrast here brethren between the earth dwellers on one hand and 144,000 on the other the earth dwellers are seduced into idolatry do you remember what was said about the 144,000 they kept themselves pure revelations 14 verse 4 in other words they remained true to the gospel and did not worship other gods but babylon hum, but the human society of babylon is opposition to god has beguiled all the nations of the world into idolatry because of this she is targeted of divine punishment fallen fallen is babylon the great as far as God is concerned, there is, this is as good as done. Now, there's one more coming, the third angel. The first angel announces that God's judgment has already begun. The second angel announces that God's judgment is sure, is a sure thing that is in, unescapable. So, we got the third angel. Revelation 9 through 11. The third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast and his image and receives his mark, on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury and has been poured full strength in the cup of wrath. He will be tormented and burning in sulfur in the presence of the holy angels of the Lamb, and the smoke of the torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast on his image or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. Do you notice the change in the audience? compared to the first two announcements. The first angel made his announcement to every nation, tribe, language, and people. The second angel made his announcement to Babylon. The third makes his announcement to individuals, to anyone. Anyone. It is almost as if John had specific people and faces, names in mind. Like, guess what? Yours truly. Let's put the announcement of the third angel in context. Revelation 13 ends with the cost of taking the mark of the beast. The cost is economic. You can not buy or sell. The cost is physical. Persecution, deception. It is costly not to have the mark of the beast. But the cost of having the mark of the beast is for greater than cost of not 
having the mark of the beast. What is the cost of having the mark of the beast? Revelation 9 and 10, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or in his hand, he too will drink of the, of the wine of God's fury. This makes me think of the precious expression of Jesus Christ in Matthew 10 verse 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both and body in hell. I shall say that again for you, brethren. Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. If there is an earthquake in your life, <clears throat> it's change. Not so much of any mistakes you've done. I think I made a few mistakes in my life, but I could care what people try to bring up from five years ago, ten years ago, thirty years ago. You're gonna have that like I did. This is this is your time, brethren. If you are not saved, don't take up any more time because Satan wants you to take all the time in the world. So he can move his trickery and use his little weapons in his trick bag. In his trick bag, he's only got three expressions to control your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He wants to put borders around you. He wants to put restrictions around you. He wants to just take control, kill you still, and destroy you. But Romans 10.13 sings loud to you tonight, brethren, like it has never sung loud in any other time, but tonight for you, for you, and that's for you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hello, Jesus! Take me, love me, I'm yours. Take me, love me, I am yours. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins, and I am willing right now to turn from his sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Oh, Jesus, I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward tonight. Thank you for throwing me on my knees. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am praising you. Most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. We can have this, brethren. We can have this tonight, right now. We are looking for change. We have it. We are looking for God's love. We can have it. We can have all, all, and all right now. Let's take it, brethren. It's time to be peacemakers and change makers of this world. It's time to bring into the Holy Spirit and God's truthfulness into this accord right now. We come at you, O God. Bring change throughout the world. Slam your hand upon those countries that turn on you who are allowing extremist jihadists to control their countries, their lives, the way they breathe, who writes poetry, who doesn't write poetry, to express themselves creatively so they can feel the flow of your love coming from the throne room of God to their own lives so they can raise their prayers up to you, O God, like it's incense going before your face. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. Now, brethren, you've often heard me say, and Anita has also said the same thing, with your new life comes relationships, new relationships. You walk away from those happy hour morons you see every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, hopefully that's enough. And they're not in your life, but the attraction is you just see them there and you go home alone without them, hopefully. And it may be exciting and predictable that they buy you a drink and you buy them a drink and you say last call and you hang out at the fast food joint till four, 4 o'clock in the morning then you go to work at 7. My God, I used to do that. So, but those days are politely over. Now let's have this over for you. I don't care how dark your addictions are or, or, what, or what sin you've done. You know, go into this time frame now 
and develop the relationships. And each and I invite you to become part of our ministry. We want you to travel with us. We want you to be part of our evangelical team. We want you to be part of our, our medical team. We want you to be part of all of our translation team that recently started with a group of students up in Sing Singapore and Hong Kong. We go into this world knowing, flowing, and growing in Jesus' name. But we can't do it alone. We cannot do this alone. So in the matchless name of Jesus, come into us and love us and, and plant that seed of, of, of tithing. Your financial fruits will grow. Your return on investment will be backed up by your works through faith. We'll be, back, we'll be backing up your faith through works. Your obedience will also be another offering, how you die daily, how you measure yourself with your faith on the cross with Christ and feeling that new heart that God has given you, given you personally, and the depth of it is that empty tomb. So, brother, we, Anita and I, we thank you for your prayers and support way ahead of time, and we cannot do this alone, so we do have a lot of exciting crusades happening throughout the world come and join us brethren come and join us tonight and we will plant you will be planted a seed in all of eternity in master's name of jesus in jesus name we love thee again our website is brianchewitt.com and our ministry name is morningstar communications network or mcm ministries we are a 501c certified church here in the united states all right brethren so with this time the third angel tells us that those who wear the mark of the beast will drink of the wine of God's fury which has been poured full strength in, in the cup of wrath this should be obvious let me say it anyway we are not to think of a literal cup the language is let's say metaphorical Christians know all about the cup of, of wrath this is a cup emptied by Jesus on the cross Remember Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. My Father, if this cup, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. This cup is being poured unto those who do not take Jesus into their life. You and I were born as sinners. We do chase after other gods, or other people do that. We do allow ourselves to be seduced by the idolatries of Babylon. So like the earth dwellers, we deserve to drink from the cup of God's wrath. But we don't. Why not? Because Jesus has drank from the cup in our place. Jesus is like Pharaoh's cup built bearer. He drinks what he, what he should drink. He drinks the poison meant for us. He died for you and I. He rose for you and I. What happens to unbelievers to the earth dwellers, to those who with the mark of the beast, the drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. The image is simple and easy to understand. In the ancient world, wine has frequently cut with water to dilute the full effect of the alcohol. But this time, it is undiluted, full strength, which means what? which means that all of the prior judgments of God, the sealed judgments, the trumpet judgments, they're like mixed wine, weakened, diluted, dampened, but the final judgment is unmixed, uncut, undiluted. People will experience like God, the wrath of God and all his fullness, strength and ferocity. In other words, there is no more grace, no more mercy, no more long suffering. You're dead, sentenced to hell for eternity. Do you know what unbelievers end up doing? They end up exchanging one cup for another. They are drinking from Babylon's cup, the manny wine of her adulteress. Now they drink from God's cup, the wine of God's fury. The two cups go together. If you drink the cup of the, if you drink the wine of Babylon's cup, you'll be, you'll be required to drink the cup of God's wrath. What else happens to unbelievers, to the earth dwellers, to those with the mark of the beast? Revelation 10 through 11, he will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of the torment rises forever and ever.
What else does it sounds? Doesn't this sound like your lessons of Sodom and Gomorrah? But it is Sodom and Gomorrah with a difference. The smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. The torment never ends. The torment is eternal. The third angel is talking about hell. Of course, hell is a place where the fire is never quenched. There is no firehouse seven, where smoke always ascends, where torment never ends. And we come into this time Saints need, to, we need to endure. Let's walk away from any negativity, make peace at all times. They cannot compromise the gospel, they cannot give up the faith. They need to endure and they end up facing the very judgment pronounced by, the, by these three angels. We cannot negotiate with Satan. We cannot negotiate and apologize to Satan for being our actions, what we are. Then the first, and the, we find the second application in the very first part of verse 13 of our scripture reading. Then I heard a voice from, from heaven saying, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed. These are the second of seven benedictions found throughout the revelation. Blessed because they endure. Blessed because they have compromised. They have not compromised the faith. Blessed because they die in the Lord. Blessed because they wear the mark of God rather than the mark of the beast. Blessed because they experience God's salvation rather than God's judgment. From now on, let's make sure we know, we know, brethren, what now stands for. Now stands for time of attack by the dragon through the two beasts. Now stands for the time between the two comings of Christ. Now stands for the time between day and in other words, every Christian who dies is pronounced blessed. To die in the Lord is better, far better than to die in the beast. In the matchless name of Jesus, we come into this time, brethren. We come into this love. We come into this glory. We come into this fight. We're fighting the fight of good faith. We're raising the praise every day, O Lord. Give us the strength to teach those who don't know how to pray, to don't know how to repent, to give them that substance of truth tonight, this morning, wherever we are in the world. If your day is just beginning in the late a.m. hours or early morning hours, and the sun is about to rise, fall to your knees, and raise your heart to heaven. Fall to your knees, and lift to this all and all for God's love and truth. Loving truth. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, Jesus coming back. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, oh Lord, I'm on fire. Thank you, Jesus. Come into our life, oh Lord. Open up our eyes, open up our hearts, renew our minds. Bring that everlasting peace unto your love, into your time. Bring your everlasting, triumphant glory into our timepiece, our love. Bring this to the now, O Lord. You are a God of faith, which is the now. We're not worried about yesterday or tomorrow. It's the now, God. Bring us to your moment. Give us your strength. Give us the edification to continue with the gospel of peace. And we thank all who come into this ministry, O Lord, as financial partners, spiritual partners, friends of the ministry who watches over our networks. We thank you for the substance of all that you have given to us, O Lord, upon this night, upon this morning. In Jesus' name, we love thee. Brethren, that does conclude our broadcast for this evening, and good morning to all. We invite you to keep up to date with all of our news and information of our exciting crusades at bryanthewitt.com, bryanthewitt.com. Again, we thank you for being a financial partner into our ministries. If you wish to send us a check, our contact link is on the bottom left corner of our website. And you can make your checks payable to, payable to MCM Ministries or Morningstar Communications Network. We walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you for your time. Until next time. Au revoir. Adios. Good day for the people.